Shocking, you want to grow your Instagram following. Oh, and drive your engagement? Yeah, you and everybody else out there. But no need to worry because by the end of this video, you will no longer be begging for followers and hoping to see people adding you every time you open up the app, but instead you will have grown a genuine audience and know how to engage with them so they're actually the right people following you for the right reasons. And let me tell you, this works. Of my clients who have been in business for less than a year, I've had a minimum of a 300% following increase with them in the first three months of doing business. Any of my clients who are a little bit more established have seen a 25% increase in the first three months that we work together. So trust me, this works and it will for you. Once you're done checking out this video, be sure to like it if it helped you out. I wanna know what kind of content to be creating. Also subscribe to my channel and make sure to ring that bell so that you get a notification every time I post a new video. Let's get into it. So when we're thinking about using Instagram, it's really important that we think about how people are using Instagram. It's shocking, right? But we often create these things hoping that people will just want to hear about it. That's not true. When are people using Instagram? While they're in the bubble bath? While they're taking a break from their kids or from work? Or just aimlessly standing in the line somewhere waiting for their turn? We don't always engage with Instagram because we're like, oh, let me check out what I can buy today. That's probably not the case. We're looking for things that entertain us, inspire us, and move us a little bit forward in life and keep us up to date with the people and things that matter to us the most. Instagram's main goal is to keep you in their product as much as possible. The more you scroll, the more time you spend, the more ads you see, and the more that they're able to gather data from their users. So the reason that Instagram has implemented things like not posting in chronological order is because brands were getting carried away with just pumping out content knowing that their users were gonna see it. Well, that doesn't keep the user engaged. Now they're looking at a feed full of spam and most likely they're gonna unfollow those brands because they're not any adding any value to their day. They're just basically putting content in front of them that they haven't asked to see. Yes, there are a lot of tips and tricks on the technical side that I'm about to go through with you that will help improve your rating in the algorithm. However, nothing will ever trump a brand who is authentic, offering value, and being something that people can aspire to or relate to. The first thing that you need to remember is that the first hour is the most important to your feed post. Now, there's a lot that we can do in this first hour to drive engagement, but that first hour is what is going to tell Instagram whether you're a cool, engaging post that most of your followers want to engage with, or it's kind of just a meh and not really keeping people scrolling. Don't give them a reason to close the app. Instagram does not want people closing that app. Let's keep them engaged. So that first hour is the most important, but that brings me to step two well, which hour do I post it in? Now you should be looking at your insights. So in the Instagram app, this is actually where I choose to do it. There are a lot of apps out there that will tell you what time, but I actually prefer Instagram statistics on this. Um, I just trust them more. I find them a little bit more granular. Um, so once you're, you've gone into that insight section, I'll walk you through this. So once you open up the Instagram app, you're gonna head over to your own profile, top that, hit that little hamburger menu in the top right corner, open up your insights, and then we're gonna pop over to audience. So your audience, once you scroll down to the bottom, it'll show you exactly when the busy times are by each day of the week. So you can kind of flip through and see. So that's just where you can look at which hours are the busiest based on your followers. So even if you're using a scheduler, which I really encourage that you are, you can see what little three hour block is the most busy and that's when the most of your followers are online. So that's gonna fluctuate even if you have someone in the same city with a similar um, following base, it's actually gonna look at your followers and what their activity looks like and make sure that that's the busiest time that yours are actually in the app. The next thing that I'm gonna recommend that you do is send that feed post to your Instagram story. More than half of Instagram users actually go to their stories before they start scrolling down their feed. So we know it's a great place to capture people's attention. And what you can do is send that feed post. Let's walk through it right here. So what you're gonna do is open up the Instagram app, go to your most recent feed post, click on that little paper plane guy and put add to your story. Now you can decorate it here, but you can find something that says new post. What's great, don't just pop on a little new post and call it a day. Tell people why they should go there. Don't just look like, hey guys, look at me, look at me. Go ahead and add something like, here's the backstory to my family's life, whatever. So 
So this is something that will actually tell them what kind of content they're gonna get there. Maybe it's a, maybe what they're gonna get is a discount code. Maybe what they're gonna get is, oh, you think I would know how to move this? <laughs> maybe what they're gonna get is a discount code. Maybe what they're gonna get is um, a little insight to what you're doing, but then you just post that to your story and that'll send people directly there. The next thing I'm gonna suggest is to make sure you're using a variety of captions. Now, a lot of them should be whatever your genuine content is. Ask questions, start a conversation, and when people comment in your comment section, reply to them. Oh my gosh, reply to them, and don't just say, thanks, kissy face. Instagram actually has a rule of thumb to know whether it's a bot following or not, and that's a forward minimum. So when someone writes to you or asks a question, don't just get back to them with a one word answer. Reply to them with four words or more. And if you can start a dialogue there and have them, you know, ask them another question back and keep things going, you're increasing engagement and keeping them in the app and Instagram will reward you for that. Let's always keep in mind that Instagram is social media. And now if we start sucking the social out of social media, it doesn't keep people engaged. One of the best ways that people, bloggers in particular, have really taken over is because they've replied and been genuine and we feel like as an audience, we get a peek behind the curtain. A lot of really high-end brands do this as well when they're replying directly. If you put a canned reply out to everyone that writes on there like, hey, so-and-so, get back to us at info at mybrand.com, it's not very personal. If you engage with a product and they get back to you and it's clearly a person commenting on exactly what you've said, you feel like you're in the in crowd. You feel like you've been included in something and you have a safe space and it, it's just a completely different feeling. So again, make sure no matter what you're doing, whether you're writing the caption, replying to someone's comment, or even just putting content out, you're always speaking like the human being that you are. I'm talking to a human right now. So be that person and be social on social media. The fifth thing that I want you to do within that first hour that you've posted a new feed post is go back to the last two or three photos that you've posted and like all of the comments people have left for you and also reply to them. What this does is actually uses the algorithm completely in your favor and bumps you up so that you're at the top of their feed the next time they open the app. Step number six for increasing your engagement, again in that first hour, make sure that you have tagged as many people, places, and things are appropriate for that post. So don't go nuts and just tag everything that you see in there because you know you, your mug that you're drinking out of you purchased at Anthropology. Don't necessarily tag that. But do be sure that you're tagging any relevant things in the photo and absolutely always tag the location. Even if it's just the city name, you'll be shocked once you look in those insights how many people have seen that photo or engaged with that photo that never even followed you but they get that in their discovery page because of the location. Remember, it's about the more information that we can give to Instagram for it to index what sort of photos you're posting, that it'll also give you a boost up and reward you for that. So the next thing I wanna to talk to you about is alt text. I've talked about this in like an SEO blog writing way, um, but alt text is basically a way to index photos that's way easier for whether it's Google or Instagram or whoever. It's easier because we're providing them with words which are a lot easier for them to match to other things as opposed to using facial recognition or anything like that that they might have to use. So what we're gonna do is add alt text to an Instagram photo by heading into our Instagram app. So once you're in the app and you look at a photo of yours that's been posted, on the top right corner, I'm gonna hit that little three dot menu and click edit. In here, I can of course change the comment that I have, but what I actually wanna do is on the bottom right of my photo, you see it says edit alt text. What we're gonna do is write in a simple description. So I'm gonna say Stephanie McCauley of Broad World. For me, it's important that I use both of these things because I personally am part of my brand. But if this is just a brand, you can use just the name. At a wedding in a gold dress being shot, oh, let's not say shot, being photographed by the collective you. Now I'm going to use the photographer's name of his brand in this because they have a lot of search traffic and that's really important. Um, I'm actually gonna also add on here, at the Rocky Mountaineer, which was the name of the location, in Vancouver, Canada. So you can see how I'm using as many keywords as possible that are topic search terms, and I'm attaching those. So Stephanie McCauley is now attached to the Collective View, is now attached to Vancouver, and also to the Rocky Mountaineer for a wedding or a wedding venue. 
So that's a great way to make sure that we've indexed our photos and I encourage it on every single one of the photos that you put out there, again, within that first hour of posting. The next thing that you're gonna do is all of your hashtags. If you are using a scheduling tool, you aren't able to put these into the comment section. So what I always suggest to people is include them at the bottom of the caption that you're gonna put in and then just go back in and edit and move just the um, hashtags down to your first comment. Now hashtags, what do you use? How many do you use? When do you use them? I always say there's a bit of a rule of thumb here. We go three, six, and nine. So we're gonna use three very common hashtags. That's like over the million mark. We're gonna use six hashtags that have between 50 and 100,000 people using them. And then we'll use a little bit more niche ones. So under 50,000, we'll use nine of those. So those can be your brand, um, maybe other brands that are similar to yours if you wanna get really cheeky with it. But again, we're just looking to drive traffic and discoverability and to use all of the features that Instagram offers because that means you're using their product properly and they are going to like that. I'm just getting to point number nine and that means that I gave you one to eight that needed to be done within that first hour of posting. And I realize that can seem overwhelming, but let's keep in perspective. The more we're engaging with this as a human being, as a person, the more that Instagram is gonna reward us. So it's really important that we're not just, you know, scheduling 10 posts a day and saying, that'll drive my engagement. No, it won't. People don't wanna see spam. We wanna keep them engaged. We want them to be talking to people on the other side of these brands. So be as human as possible. There are some tips and tricks like scheduling tools that will help with this, writing everything out into an Excel spreadsheet so you can just pop all those comments in and your alt text and all those things. But a lot of it does have to be done manually if you want to be successful at it. Other people out there are doing it, so it's important that you are too. Point number nine, five posts per week. Now that's the benchmark that I use with everyone, but that doesn't always mean it's right for you, your product or service, whatever it is. Reason being, maybe you have a product that doesn't even have a physical product, so there's not much to take photos of. Maybe you have something that's, you know, kind of unattractive to look at because it's a very personal product, or it's an organization that, you know, is doing some really cool things, but you can only share so many stats or photos of the exact same thing over and over again. So don't feel like you have to do that many. Do as many as feels engaging to you and feels authentic to your brand. However, if you do have a really visually appealing product, like a fashion brand or an interior design company, you might be able to post two or three times a day and actually still get traction, especially when you have like a new line hit or a new project complete. That makes sense. Again, five posts is a guideline for you. Figure out what works for you. If you start posting a lot and your engagement goes down, look at that. So one way I always say this to my clients, and yes, it's gross, but it always sticks with them, is that content is like a fart. If you have to force it, it's probably shit. So don't do that. And that brings me to my final point. Point number 10 is engage. In order to be engaged with, you need to be engaging. So pop over to other clients that are like your ideal person, shopper, engage with influencers, engage with people that are engaging with influencers, find people that are in your marketplace. And this is the fun part because you basically get to pick and choose who you're attracting, who your customers are and build up a like, customer base or an audience that is absolutely who you would cherry pick because you get to. My rule of thumb is to sit on Instagram three times a day for 15 minutes doing nothing but engaging. So you're commenting, you're liking, you're asking questions, you're talking to brands that are nearby you, you're doing things that actually will make you relevant and join a conversation and show off your expertise a bit. Show off what you do, why you do it, what you're passionate about. Be attractive in the sense of really attracting that audience that you want. There is no doubt that Instagram is important for your brand and for your business, no matter the size, scale, or clientele. But that's okay because you can master it with these 10 steps and you'll honestly see this such a snowball effect as you start engaging actually being a human being on the platform. I'd love to hear from you what you think about this feedback and if there's anything else that you do that can help the community out so that we can all be successful on the Instagram platform. If this was helpful for you today, please give me that thumbs up. I would love to get that feedback from you. And if it was something that you know I didn't address, leave me a question in the comment section below. I'd love to deal with that in one of my upcoming videos. If you want more marketing videos, this is where you will find them. So subscribe to the channel and also you can follow day-to-day -day stuff on my Instagram channel, fraud underscore world. See you soon.